Hey everybody, it's Zach Sutton here from Zach Sutton Photography. Today's lesson is going to be about burn and dodge. If you're unfamiliar with what burn and dodge is, essentially what it is is a, a way to adjust the exposure of an image selectively. So instead of just sliding a contrast slider or something like that, this allows you to go in and touch up different parts of the image that you want more contrast, more highlights, and more uh, shadows. I use this tool for absolutely every image that I put out. Um, it is my number one favorite thing to do in Photoshop. I do it for everything. I think it is the most important thing somebody can use, but that's just me. Uh, there's a couple different ways on how you can burn and dodge. So I've got a video lined up here for you that's going to show you two different ways that I use. Of course there are more, but try my ways. If you like them, use them that way, or if you find some other way, let me know. Uh, and uh, here's the video. All right, what's going on everybody? We're going to do a quick little tutorial on some burning and dodging. Um, and I'm going to use a headshot for this just because this is stuff that I shot today. Um, and so you, it's going to be light touch-ups, but you'll kind of get the idea from that. So what I do as just kind of a workflow thing is I kind of go in here into Lightroom and make sure everything looks good. I usually will sharpen in Lightroom just because that is a raw converter so it's going to sharpen a lot better than Photoshop will. Um, but that's something that we can talk about later too. Let's see here, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to open this photo in Photoshop and normally what I would do is crop this down to an 8x10 because that is the standard headshot um, file but for this like I said it's just an example and he actually hasn't even selected the photos yet. so. We'll see when the time comes. But as always, I'm going to start off by pressing my workflow button here. I'm not even going to worry about blemishes right now. I'm going to start off with this neutral gray burn and dodge, which is my old way. And it's actually probably my, my normal way still. I, I was doing this uh, curves adjustment for a little bit, but I, I still very much prefer this. So I'm going to just start with dodging. And I use a big brush for this, and I have it set to mid-tones, exposure at 16%. Anything 15 to 20% is usually good. And I'm just going to go over the skin and brighten the forehead. I'm going to go down his nose here. And then I'm going to hit his cheeks here and his chin. That's about all I'm going to do on his face. I usually will then go into the eye and I will just just do a quick swoop to brighten uh, his irises so that they, they stand out a little bit more. And then I'm going to go in with burning. And burning is the same thing. I usually start with the eyebrows, especially if they have eyebrows that aren't exactly full in one area. I like to kind of do a couple quick passes on the eyebrows just to just to kind of fill them out a little bit and, and kind of give them that look that they are are a little bit more full. And then I, I take the side of the forehead right here to kind of give them a little bit of definition. And then I cut in with the cheeks. And what this is going to do is it's going to really bring out his cheekbones and kind of highlight his, uh, his jawline. And then I'll usually go in here with the lips a little bit and kind of take that jawline as well. And the thing about this is since you are using such a low opacity, you can be kind of sloppy with it. Um, and you are using, of course, a, a really soft brush. With this one, again, it's mid-tones. I have exposure at 14, but again, it's anything under 20% is usually good. Um, usually, I'll go in on the eyes and kind of round the eyes in the burning as well. Um, it usually works a little bit better with people with lighter eyes. It stands out. It kind of gives a, it kind of makes their eyes pop. Um, it still works with dark eyes, but it's not quite as predominant. Going on the pupils. And he has pretty, pretty solid br brow line here, so you can't really see his eyelids too much, but I usually will darken the eyelids as well. And as you can see, it doesn't look like a lot has changed here, but if I do a before and after, you can see a pretty drastic change. And usually what I'll do is I'll tone down the opacity on this to about 50%. So it's pretty subtle, but you're able to manipulate the light a little bit and uh, make it work to your advantage. Now, I will uh, go through and do it on this layer as well. 
And this is the other way that I do it. And it, it works exactly the same, except for this one, I'm using a white brush. And again, I have hardness at zero. And opacity doesn't really matter because with this, you're actually using uh, a curves layer that's already adjusted to not be that drastic. Oh, I guess it is a little drastic. Bring opacity down to about 35%. And again, start by dodging the forehead. And then under the cheeks here, and then also on the nose there. I usually hit up the chin as well. And then I will hit his eyes as well. And, and then I'm just going to go straight to the burn. And I'm going through this pretty quickly. You know, obviously, if you're, going, if you're working on something really important, you want to be a little bit more clean on it. But uh, this just gives you a general idea of what I do. And here we go. And again, the eyebrow, just to kind of fill it out a little bit and kind of give it a little bit more depth. Eyelid. And I'm doing this really sloppy, but it gives you the idea of what, what I would do under a normal burn and dodge job. And then again, that's really sloppy, but I like to kind of take this line and, and just kind of trace it. Um, again, I would probably redo that under normal circumstances, but what it does is it kind of helps bring out the jawline a bit and really extenuate those features. So, um, so that's with the other method. And that's the other. So we've got that one. That's the old way. And then this way, which is the newer way. And both of them have a similar effect. Um, with the old way, it seems to have a little bit more contrast. And it brings out a little bit more reds. And that's why I started doing the new way. But I still like it a lot. Um, and again, I have this ver uh, visual rep um, layer. And all this is is just to kind of show you what you're doing if you're having trouble seeing it uh, because sometimes the visual rep will, will uh, dull out the colors and make it a little bit easier to see. So that's how I burn and dodge. And like I said, depending on what I'm doing for band photos or something that's a little bit more commercial and surreal, I'll use something a little bit more drastic than this, but for headshots, this is perfect. Um, it doesn't look like it's retouched, but it definitely gives def definition to his jawline, to his cheekbones, and kind of makes it more of a 3D look. So again, that's how I burn and dodge. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at Zach, Z-A-C-H, at zsuttonphoto.com. And of course, as always, you can check out my work at zsuttonphoto.com. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please send them my way. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. Thanks for watching.